So now that we've had a quick introduction to making multiples in Max, we can start doing a bit more interesting stuff with those multiples by using more interesting starting data, which is why we have the JIT.BFG. So rather than the JIT.Noise, the JIT.BFG gives us a tremendous amount more control over the randomness. It gives us a wider range of types of randomness, and it gives us the ability to repeat our values. It's not just new randomness each time, but we can go back to settings that we like and settings that we've crafted, as we've seen in the previous tutorial. So we'll do a 3D plane, float 32, and I'll just do 100 by 2 to start out with. And I'll create some attributes here. Do an attribute for our scale, our alignment, our offset, and for right now I'm just going to do a basis of noise dot gradient and we'll take a look at this as an image first now alignment we can just simply take a floating point number box plug it into alignment that's fine but for scale and offset we're going to want to use the pack object pack two floating point values so that we can independently control the X and the Y offset and the X and the Y scale. And of course the reason why we're sending these out to number boxes rather than controlling them directly from the attribute is uh, there's two reasons really one is so that we can save these values into a preset and the other is because it's hard to interact with the multiple values in the offset and the scale in the jit.bfg's attributes and as you've seen me do before, I like to drag these number boxes over the attribute so that you don't accidentally interact directly with the attribute. You interact with the number boxes. You can option, click, and drag, and command K to hide on lock, and that gives you a much neater appearance. And I can take the second outlet of the JIT.world, which is the uh, bang that comes out every frame of rendering, pass that into the JIT.BFG so that the JIT.BFG will re-render every frame. And let's take a look at what I can do here with the offset and the scale. So you see by increasing the X scale Right, I'm increasing these bands of randomness being generated by the JIT.BFG. By increasing the Y scale, I'm separating the values of the two rows. By increasing the alignment from zero, where red, green, and blue, or X, Y, and Z are all the same, I can shift those apart so that I get different noise on the three planes. And then the offset allows me to scroll through the noise. The X offset is like a flyover of this landscape of noise I've created, whereas the Y offset is going to shift the two rows in a vertical flyover, but we can't really see it as a vertical flyover right, right now because there's only two rows. So this obviously is going to give us a much more interesting and much more dynamic noise to work with. And let's take a look what that does when we feed it into the jit.gl.multiple. jit.gl.multiple. 
multiple. How many parameters? Let's do three parameters. Which parameters? At GL params position, scale, color. Of course, the order in which we type these in is the order in which the inlets are specified. So because scale is the second param that we specified, the second inlet is the scale array inlet. Let's connect these up to a jit.gl. Grid shape. We'll just use a simple sphere at the moment. No material. And in order to do some processing on our values, we'll use a jit.gen. Dive inside our gen. We only need one inlet. We'll make three outlets. One outlet for position, outlet for scale, and one outlet for color. I'll just use the position. I'll center my position around 0 by subtracting 0.5, and I'll spread it out a bit over 5 meters. And that's my position, and I'll have my scale be fixed at 0.1 meter. And I'll use my raw output of my JIT. BFG as my color information. Like so. This needs to be output 3. Like so. And there's 200 grid shapes whose position is determined by the x, y, and z values here. However, they are shifted by 0.5 so that they're centered, and they're expanded by 5 so that they're spread out over an area of 5 meters instead of being crunched together into a 1 meter area. I'm just specifying a fixed size of all of my spheres of 0.1, it could be whatever I want. 0 0.05 is fine. If I want them a little bit smaller. And my color is determined by the actual values that are coming out of the jit.bfg. And color and position are linked. So now let's take a look at what happens as we modulate these values. Let's modulate the offset. I'm going to spread out my number boxes here so I get a bit finer control. And we can see we get kind of a coherent movement. And here we get a kind of coherent morphing of the shape. The alignment at zero is just going to give us a straight line. And as we vary the alignment, the points will move away from each other in less and less predictable patterns. And then the scale is going to give us either fairly zoomed in noise, which will result in coherent shapes, or extremely spread out randomness. Whereas the Y scale will really determine the differentiation between the two shapes that are being generated here. So you can see rather than the kind of 
total static white noise that the jit dot noise gives us, here we're getting something much more coherent and interesting. And each row of the output of the jit dot BFG is kind of its own shape. So if we were to put more rows, now we have 500 circles. And they're all functioning independently of each other. Now it's a little bit hard to see this because all of our snakes, if you will, here are the same color. So let's take a different approach to color and just try colorizing from a secondary input here. And I'll go back to our nice, simple jit.noise. just to give us five different colors so we can see each of our lines as an independently colored element. Now you can see what I did here, jit.noise3, float32, one space five. Um, that's because if I just did five, I'm getting columns of color, which is going to colorize each one of my snakes into five different colored segments, which is interesting and cool and fun. Um, but one by five gives me five rows of color. And that's exactly the same thing as using a jit.transpose. which will also transpose my five columns of color into five rows of color. And now, as these move, we can see them as independent entities. And the smaller my Y scale, the more correlated they are with each other because this is a more coherent image. And the larger my X scale, the more randomness there is, but still a coherent pattern. And you can see the clusters are staying together because my Y scale is small. But if both my X and Y scale are large, then I get a really, really noisy structure. So you can get structures that look like writing or organic forms or all sorts of different effects. And of course, all of this can be saved into a preset. and animated, as we've seen before.
create some really beautiful organic effects. But how does this relate to the idea of city building, which is what we're going to be doing later on in the semester? Well, it actually relates very directly and very closely. Let's disable these, and let's make a whole new section over here where we're dealing with cubes. Let's take exactly the same BFG information, but pass it through a new Jitta Gen. And in this Jitta Gen, We'll again create three outputs for position, scale, and color. Take our values and spread them out on the x and z axes only and let's zero them on the y axis and we can center them as well and for scale We'll just do one meter tall buildings. And we'll use our raw values for color and connect output two to scale, connect output three to color. And now we're getting something quite interesting. We can knock this back down to just say 200 buildings and spread them out even further spread them out over 20 meters and let's give them a material So now we're starting to get something quite interesting and considerably more architectural. So we can get everything from a very scattered arrangement of buildings to a very cohesive pattern arrangement and anything in between. We can get two highly coherent shapes or two highly divergent shapes.